She was the essence of love. And she was completely, totally, absolutely merged with Maharaja and surrendered to him. The same way that Maharaja, in a, you could say, was surrendered to Hanuman or surrendered to Ram. Just be here now. Just be here now. Welcome to the Krishna Das Pilgrim Heart Hour. In this podcast, Krishna Das shares his warm hearted and down to earth path to the divine. If you are interested in supporting Krishna Das's podcast, please go to BeHereNowNetwork.com slash KD. Oh, no. 
दामे सीता Sita Radhe Jaya Jaya 
What are the dream content? What are my dream contents like? That's what the question is. <laughs> this person asks, do you see yogis or do you sing in there too? And are they accompanied by spiritual rapture? I wish. Last night I dreamt that Ramdas and I were driving around an old World War, World War II tank a huge, big, green tank. I don't even know what we were doing. That's the kind of dreams I have. And that's about it. No rapture, no yogis. Every once in a while, maybe somebody comes by to visit, but it's been a while. The Buddhists attribute cause and effect to karma and the bhaktas to God. What, have, what do I have to say about it? The Jyotish says that the planets affect the mind. What did Baba talk about Jyotish? Baba never talked about Jyotish, which is uh, Ayurveda, Indian astrology, Vedic astrology, as opposed to Western astrology. Uh, there was a, the Buddhists attribute cause and effect to karma and the bhaktas to God. Um, Ramana Maharshi had said that Ishwara, which is the Lord, the Supreme God, is the distributor of karma. The one that 
uh, kind of writes the menu for your your incarnation, what karmas you're supposed to try to work on, or what karmas you'll face, and what your karmas will and how your karmas will unfold in any particular birth. So Ishwara, God, Ishwara is the supreme personal God. I guess that would be uh, Krishna, Ram, or the avatars are, are, I think, would you could say that they are Ishwara, they are Bhagavan, they are the God. And they are the distributors of karma. They, so it's just another way of looking at the same thing. All these things are different ways of looking at the same thing. That much you have to understand. At least as far as I understand, which is what Maharaj used to say to us, sub ek all one all one all one right so any kind of discussion about this stuff is simply philosophical and intellectual once you realize that you've got to get your shit together and calm your mind and learn how to be a good human being all that other stuff big deal you know there's no even need to try to understand it it's good to have a little bit of a background in it so you kind of get the picture, but got to do your stuff. You got to take responsibility for your actions and calm your mind. Find a way to open your heart so that other beings are included and uh, treat, become a good human being. Did Ramana, did Maharaji ever talk about Ramana Maharshi? Oh, yes, yes. Uh, not too much. I mean, he didn't really talk about, well, I don't know. The Westerners at first especially had very little, um, we didn't speak Hindi at first. Later, when we learned a little Hindi, we, you know, it was over the years of meeting the old devotees and, uh, hearing their stories that we got a fuller picture of Maharaji's leelas, what the things he did, the things he said. When we were with him, the Westerners were with him, it was just like, you know, it's just like all you want, you would, it was really extraordinary. So we weren't that interested in those things. But anyhow, yeah, there's a story about, and I think it's in, uh, I don't know. It's in one of the books about either divine reality or miracle of love or maybe either one of Dada's books uh, by his grace and uh, the near and the dear. So the story is Maharaji was up in northern India and sitting with some devotees and all of a sudden he pulled his blanket up over his head and he started weeping and weeping and weeping. And finally he came out of the blanket and he said, bring me some water, bring me some water. He's so thirsty, he's so thirsty. He's in so much pain, he's in so much pain. Bring me some, and he sipped a little water. And then he said, India is losing such a great saint. India is losing such a great saint. And it was just exactly at the time that Ramana Maharshi was passing. So, uh, that's, and I, I also heard from Mr. Tiwari that they visited Ramana Ashram, Ramana Maharshi's ashram, way in the south in Tiruvannamalai. They were in a car, they pulled up in front, and the two of them walked. Mr. Tuari and uh, Maharaji, they walked straight back through the temple, through, through the ashram, to the back of the ashram that, that looked out on Arunachala, this sacred mountain. And they stood there for a while. Then they turned around and left. They walked through the ashram again. And, and apparently Ramana Maharshi was in the hall at that time. You know, these beings aren't in their bodies in the first place, so they don't have to go like, hey, I'm here, how you doing? 
it was enough that they were that close to each other. They were both you know, incredible beings. Yes, we will chant Om Ham Hanumate Nama today. Where did Maharaji do his tapasya in his young days? What did he say about Kumbha Mela, Gangaji, and the sacred rivers? Uh, he might have said many things about these things. We don't, I don't really know. Uh, I know that he traveled a lot as a very young man. Uh, and that he, he was in a cave for a long time in a town called Nib Karori, which is where he got his name, because it was at that time he kind of finished his uh, preparation, he, uh, his sadhana, you could say. And he uh, came out of the cave and did all kinds of miracles and all kinds of things, and he became known as the Baba from Nib Karori, which in the northern dialect is Nim Karoli, same place. So. Mostly, as far as we understand, he spent most of his time in UP, in Uttar Pradesh. And uh, later, up in the mountains, he spent a lot of time. Uh, and I, I also heard stories about him down by the Narmada River in uh, Gujarat, and Rajasthan, I guess, maybe, Gujarat, so. What was Maharaji's lineage? You know, we don't know who his guru was. We don't really know those things. He didn't talk about it. Um, but his lineage is definitely Hanuman. It's very possible Hanuman himself is Maharaji's guru. Because in the Hanuman Chalisa, at the end it says, bless me as my guru. Kripa kro gurudev kinai. And uh, from other sadhus that I had met, they had said similar things. That... Uh, One, one Baba I met told me that he, uh, he heard Maharaji, he was sitting with Maharaji in the jungle and Maharaji would talk to Hanuman as if nobody else could see him, but Maharaji would be having a conversation with Hanuman. So, things like that. The other day I was meditating and I had a vision of a saint. I think it was Siddhima. It felt like she told me not to fret about the impermanent and to sing to God. That sounds like her. Can you talk about Siddhima? You know, it's very hard for me to talk about Siddhima. I've got a block against it because for 30 years, she, for more, I, I mean, I've known her since 1972. She never wanted to be talked about. She never wanted to be uh, written about. She hid herself very, uh, very well. She did not want to be famous. She did not want to be well known. She had no desire for those things. And she, we understood that. So we didn't really bring people to her. We didn't talk about her for all those years. So it's very hard for me to overcome that, but uh, she was extraordinary. I mean, she was the essence of love and, and she had great strength. And whatever she said happened, happened. 
and she was completely, totally, absolutely merged with Maharaji. This is what I understand. And surrendered to him the same way that Maharaji, in a, you could say, was surrendered to Hanuman or surrendered to Ram through that, in, in that same way. Uh, you know, Ma would say, don't ask me for anything. Ask, ask Maharaji, what are you asking me for? So she had merged her, her separateness in him, in his, in his oneness, in his essence. Uh, and she, when she was there, the temples were spotless. You could eat off the floor anywhere you went. You wouldn't want to, but you could. They were that clean. She, he had said to her that when a saint leaves the body, his temples become his body. So she treated Kenchi and Bhumiadar and the other, especially the temples in the hills, she treated them as Maharaji's body. She took care of them and made sure they were taken care of properly. She left her family, you know, when they were older and grown. She left her family. Her husband finally, her husband died. Her husband was a very, was a lawyer and a hard drinking guy and totally not into anything. But eventually he came around to become one of Maharaji's staunchest devotees. And Maharaji took him all around India to all the, the Char Dham, the sacred places, pilgrimage places. And then uh, he, when he died, the Siddhima at that point and Jivantima, the two of them, they came and they started living in the temple with Maharaji and traveling with him. They left, she left her family at that point. And as the years went by, she had less uh, uh, she you know she took she saw her family they would come to see her in the temple but she didn't go home a lot uh, back to the family home after some point uh, this really you know she was extraordinarily beautiful and sweet the sweetest when she would say your name you would just melt you know And it was with her that I had my two, two very extraordinarily deep experiences that saved my life and uh, kept me alive and brought me back to Maharaji, through her. Of course, she wouldn't say it was through her because she, she would just say Maharaji did it, but she was there too. You, she's one of the greatest saints that ever lived. So. Are there any mythical magic gurus or any men or women, I would assume, like Nimkaroli Baba, under the radar? Of course, they're always here. They have to be here. They're taking care of everything. They're running the show. There's nowhere they can go. But whether we meet them or not, that's not our choice. We meet them if it's in our best interest to meet them, if they want that to happen. Otherwise, we just, we, we just do our practice and we try to align ourselves with that grace that's always flowing. But of course, the great saints are always here. They, don't, they never went anywhere. There's nowhere to go. Somebody wants a list of books that have enriched me. Uh, there's a list on my website, krishnadas.com. Somewhere on the website, there's a list of books that's very far from complete. I, I, I really have to go back and add a lot more to it. But there's a list of, of books that I like. How do you keep loving Maharaji, irrespective of all life circumstances? How not to be carried away by hardships?
Hardships are hardships. They're hard to deal with. But when you guru yoga or guru's grace, which is really what I practice, the path I practice, it means trying to align, keep aligned with the, the grace of the guru, the presence of the guru. So for me, Maharaji is that huge, vast presence in which everything happens. And okay, so I only remember that 2% of the time. But still, that doesn't mean that's not my understanding. That is my understanding. That everything happens inside of him. And nothing can happen that isn't supposed to happen. So because I have that little bit of understanding or that little bit of faith, that's, that's, that keeps the, uh, the channels open between he and I. But he's not out there. He's not somebody else. He's not only is he the presence in which I live, but he's also the living presence within me, so to speak. It all depends how you look at it. But that it's just the point of everything, of all spirituality, is to find a way to stay connected to a deeper reality. And especially when really difficult stuff is happening. That's when it's really useful. Because then that stuff does not destroy you. You know, and it's something that gets deeper and, and it comes and goes, depending on what, how difficult the stuff is. But you try to keep your connection open, and that's what regular practice is about. Regular practice is, is, helps you stay, helps you remember yourself helps you remember your perspective on things. And it, it saves you from being washed away by torments and, 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 and tormenting mind, obsessive tormenting thoughts and situations. We have to bring ourselves forward to that and into that. Uh, that's what practice is about. That's, that's what these, that's what, coming here every week is about chanting for me is about entering deeply again into that presence again and again and and and, and releasing whatever thing whatever is tormenting me whether it's my own stuff or well it's always my own stuff whether i think somebody else is causing it temporarily or whether what is still my own stuff so you have to take responsibility for that it's our reactions to things that hurt us. The things themselves don't hurt us. It's our reaction. And our, our, our knee-jerk, our you know, reactions that we can't help. Sometimes things are really, really brutally painful, and we do suffer. But how long we suffer has a lot to do with how we understand ourselves and how we understand life and how we, how we go through our lives. Sometimes I've heard, heard tears arise when I, me, speak of certain things usually memories of a truth being told. And I've always wondered what makes you cry. Uh, whenever you come into contact with that love, whenever you get a moment's break from the, 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 the dark little hole that we live in in our daily lives, well, all you can do is cry. The feeling of being released from prison, the feeling of being released from that darkness is so sweet. 
that you can't, it, the tears come. They're not tears of sadness. They're not even necessarily tears of joy. They're just tears of, of release, of, hap, of, of happiness in a way. They're not, it's not, it's just, what else can you do? That's, <laughs> so somebody asked when Maharaji said only Jesus died the real death he never thought of himself so he died the real death what he's talking about the death of the ego the death of separation separateness from the rest of all other beings other universe he said Maharaji said he gave his life for his people he never died he lost himself in love. No one understands. He never died. The real death is the death of delusion, and separation, separateness, the, de the, the death of, of me and, and, and the coming to life in recognizing the one within, the one everywhere. That's the real death. That's what he was talking about. I, I was going to jump in the river and kill myself. He just laughed. Ah, what are you going to do? You can't die. Worldly people don't die. Only Jesus died the real death. Uh, what? He, he never thought of himself. Thoughts of me. Me, 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 me. Me and mine never arose in that being. He's an enlightened being. There's no me left. That's the real death. And he's fully alive and present everywhere at all times in the universe. One, at one, he's become, recognized the oneness of it all. I read a story about Maharaji sitting beside a dying woman in or near Kansas City, Missouri, around 2000. He allegedly spent a week or two at her bedside in the hospital. Thoughts about this? Well, I assume you, you understand he left the body in 73, right? So this was something. I don't know that story, but I will tell you another story that I do know. I had a very dear friend. Uh, and she had kidney failure and she was rushed to the hospital and she went into a coma for three days. And uh, when she went to the hospital, she put a little picture of Maharaji on her, on the table next to the bed. She had never met him physically. She knew about him from, you know, books or stories, us. So she really loved him. So she put a picture there in her hospital bed. <clears throat> so she was in this coma for three days. She told me this herself. And when she came out of the coma in three days, uh, the nurse was fixing her up or treating her. And she said, oh, it's too bad that your grandfather, he must have just left. He's been here for three days. He's been sitting here for three days. And she said, my grandfather? Well, what do you mean? And the nurse pointed to the picture of Maharaji on the, on the, isn't that your grandfather? He was here while you were in this coma. He was sitting in that chair right there for three days. So that happened. She told me that. Do I find it more difficult to live your beliefs here rather than India? That's a good question. In the old days, uh, I would, every time I came back from India, I would crash. I would lose my buzz. And then after six months or so, I'd have to run back there for like, uh, uh, what do you call it? emergency recitation, resuscitation. <laughs> uh, but that's, that's not the case anymore. 
However, India is a very special place. And uh, I love it there. I, I, I really relax there. I kind of forget about living in America. It just all goes away. And I'm very happy just sitting around doing nothing in India. Whereas here in America, I'm too busy. It's, a lot of it has to do with what they call satsang or sangha. In India, you're, you're surrounded, or in the old days anyway, uh, you're surrounded by people who are in some way in touch with, with uh, something. In America, in the West, we don't have, it's not like that. It's not like that, you know. I, I always tell people, like when we do a retreat, whether it's just a few days or a day or a week or whatever, I say, now, don't worry, you're going to crash. You're not going to be able to maintain this feeling that, that has been generated by us being together in this sacred space. And in fact, the first time a gas station attendant looks at you and says, what do you want? Super or regular? And looks at you like you're just another piece of shit on the, in the world. You know, that's how long your high will last. Because here in the retreat, you know, we're all giving each other a break. We're all kind of being our best selves in a way. And we get out there in the world and people don't give a shit about you. And that, that, you, that, it becomes harder to remember that space within when you're surrounded by people who aren't looking and don't care about it and don't see the world in a particular way. So that's why practice is so important because you keep, you learn to how to remind yourself regardless of what's happening in the outside world. <coughs> when all this craziness is settled, please come back to Australia. Australia. Oh yeah, I'd love to do that. If I could meet Maharaji now, like back in those days, what would be the one thing you ask, ask to him or tell him? <laughs> Don't send me back to America. <laughs> That's the first thing that came to my head. Don't send me back. I had to come back, but oh. Uh, there's nothing to say to him. He knows everything. He does what he has to do for us. He doesn't need to be reminded. But it's our own minds that pu pull us out of that space with him. It's our own minds that keep us closed, that put up boundaries and protection and defense mechanisms between ourselves and others that close our hearts, it's our own minds, our own stuff that make us selfish and afraid and greedy and manipulative and all that stuff. What, what, what's to tell him? What's to say? He knows it all. So that's our work. Do our work. Somebody said, I know that you said surrender is not something one can choose to do. Kind of said that. Still, what is it that stops you, me, I guess, or one, from within, from surrendering? Is it lack of faith? You're right. One 
does not surrender. The ego does not surrender. It does never stop trying to keep itself up and running. And what is the ego? Thoughts, tendencies of the way we think about things, how we see the world. This is our karmically determined version of life. That's what stops us from allowing, that's what stops us from letting go. So we have to practice letting go. That's why we, when we chant, the very basic and ongoing issue is letting go again and again of whatever you're thinking of being lost in dreamland. When, once you notice that you haven't been paying attention to the chanting, you come back again and again and again. And then it's the vasanas or tendencies of our minds that keep taking us away again and again and again. And it's only through practice and grace, if we're practicing, we already have grace. It's only through that work we do on ourselves that those vasanas are thinned out and finally, one would hope, they say, uh, one remains at home in one's own soul, so to speak, one's own being. That's surrender. The recognition of who you truly are. So, and surrender can also, you can also, um, you can also see it as a way of thinking about things, so to speak. So, like Ramana Maharshi said, either you do self-inquiry or you surrender to God. And if you surrender, that's it. You don't worry anymore. If you really surrendered, you don't worry. Thoughts even don't arise anymore. It, you've, it's all, you've dropped it all at the feet of the Lord. We haven't, we can't do that though. We can't do either one. So that's why they're practices. So you can, when you surrender, then everything that happens to you happens by the hand of the Lord, so to speak. And our only response is, thank you. Whether it hurts or it doesn't hurt, whether it's happy or unhappy, high or low, in or out, up or down, thank you. We take it all as prasad. But who are we kidding? You know, we're not, we're not ready for that. We like certain things, we don't like other things. You know, so that's why we need to practice again and again and again. Practice, practice, practice. That's all I can say. Practice, practice, practice. Can we do chants and give puja to Hanuman and Maharaji and still be non-vegetarian? <laughs> you know, Maharaji once said, Hanumanji eats eggs in America. And I've thought about it. What is it? And it must mean that people offer like cookies and cakes to Maharaji that are made with eggs. They offer cookies and cakes to Hanuman. And they don't realize there's eggs in there, but Hanuman, Hanumanji accepts those offerings. So, you know, it's not what you put into the body, into the mouth, like Jesus said, it's what comes out of the mouth that's really important. So if you eat meat, you eat meat. That doesn't mean you can't pray and you can't. However, there are a lot of thoughts about that. Ahimsa, non-harming, non-violence is a very powerful practice. So, uh, but that's a whole discussion that we don't have time for and that I'm not even qualified to give. But the answer is yes, of course. You don't need to be vegetarian to love God and to pray. Of course not. You're a human. You're a being. That's the first qualification. Certain foods seem to, they say, uh, create 
uh, heaviness in the mind, in the body, that has to be overcome in a sense to some degree or, or worked with to some degree in some way. Uh, but, you know, just be a good human being. It doesn't matter to me what you eat. And Maharaji never told us to be vegetarian. He was, but we never were required to do anything except hang out and try to be in that love. And he loved us as we are. He wouldn't take his love away if we ate meat. Unless he could see that that was not healthy for us, then he would say it. So, you know, it's more like if you could get rid of your self-hatred, that would be a lot better than just becoming a vegetarian and hating yourself, still hating yourself. So... Okay, let's sing that mantra to Hanuman. Om hum, like I hum a tune, <clears throat> although in India that's a short A, ha, ha, hum, hanumate, namaha. Om hum, hanumate, namaha. Anumate Namaha. Let's sing this all together. Not call and response. Just call and response. Just sing along if you like. Om Ham Anumate Namaha. Om Ham Anumate. Namaha Om Ham Hanumate Om Ham Hanumate Om Ham Hanumate Namaha Om Ham Hanumate Namaha Anumate Namaha Om Ham Anumate Om Ham Anumate Om Ham Anumate
te Namaha Om Hum Anumate Om Hum Anumate Om Hum Anumate Namaste Namaha Om Ham Namaste Namaha Om Ham Namaste 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 Namaste Om Ham Anumate Om Ham Anumate Om Ham Anumate Om Ham 
थे थे
श्री गुरु चरण सरोज रज जमा मुकुर सुदारे भर नोबर बिमल जस चोदायक पल चारे बुद्धिहीन तनु जान के मेरो पवन कुमारियारा पल बुद्धि विद्या दे मोही खलेस बेका सावर राम छंद पद जे शरण जे अनुमान ज्ञान गुण साग चेक पीस तिहु लोक उजाग राम दूत तुलत बलधाम अंजनी पुत्र पवन सुतना महावीर बेक्रम पजरंगी तुमति निवार सुमति के संग कंचन वरण बिराज सुबेस कानन कुंडल कुंचित केस मत बजोर ध्वजा बिराज कांदे मूंज जने साज सुवन के सरी नंद तेज प्रताप महाजगबंद दयावान गुणे अति चातु राम काज कर बे को प्रभु चरत सुने बे को रसिया राम लखन सीता मन बसे सूक्ष्म रूप दड़ कट रूप दड़ लंक जराव हिम रूप दड़ असुर संहार राम चंद्र के काज संवार सजीवन लखन जियाये रघुबीरा शिव लाय रघुपति की बहुत बराय मम मम प्रिय बरताय सम भाई अस बदन तुम रोज सगाम अस कै श्रीपति खत लगा सन काद कब्रमाद मुनीस आरद शारद सहित अहिस कम कुबेर दिग पाल जहां ते कभी को बिद कै सके कहां ते तुम उपकार सुग्रीवाकिन राम मिलाय राज पद दीन मरो मंत्र विभीषण मान लंकेश्वर भय सब जग जान सहस्र जो जन पर बान योताई मुदुर पल जान प्रभु मुद्र कले मुख माही चल दिलंग गए अचर जनाही दुर्गम काज जगत के जेत सुगम अनुग्रह तुमरे ते ते राम दुवारे मरकवारे होत न आज्ञा दिन पे जाए तब सुख लाहे तुम्हारे शरण मरा चक काहू को दरन अपन तेज समारो आपे तीनो लोक हांक ते काम पे उत्त शासन कट नहीं आवे महावीर जब नाम सुनावे हसे रो गे सब फिर चपत निरंतर अनुमत बेर संकट ते अनुमान छुरावे मन कम बचन ध्यान न जो लावे सब पर राम तपस्वे राज तीन के काज सकल तुम साज और मनोरथ जो खोवे लावे सोवे अमित जीवन पल पावे 
Chano yuga purta tapa tuma He purta sid jagata ujiya Sadhu santa ke tumara kovar Asura nikandana ramadulal Ashta siddhino nidhi ke data Asavara dinha jani ki mata Kamara sayana tumare pasa Sadaro ho ragupati ke dasa Tumare bhajana rama ko pave Janama janama ke dukha bisarave Anta kala raguvar pura jai Jahan janama har bhakta kahai Or devata chitna darai Anumata se isarav sukha karai Kata kate mitte sabha pira Josu mere hanumat bala bira Je 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 hanuman gosai Krupa karo guru dev ki nai O sat bar pat kar koi Chutta hi banni maha sukha hoi Joya par hanuman chalisa Oya Siddhi Saki Gaurisa Mula Siddha Sasada Hadi Chera Ki Jainat Hrdaya Mandir Bhavanat Naya Sankata Harana Mangala Murti Rup Siyara Amalakan Sita Sahita Hrdaibhasa surabhu pasi avar Ram chandra parje sharanam Mangala murti marta nanda Sakala amangala mula nikanda Mangala murti marta nanda Sakala amangala mula nikanda Shiram je Ram je je Ram Shiram je Ram je je Ram Bolo Shiram je Ram je je Ram Shiram je Ram je je Ram Shri Ram Je Ram Je Je Ram Shri Ram Je Ram Je Je Ram Sita Ram Sita Ram Sita Ram Je 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 Sita Ram Sri Ram Je Ram Je Je Ram Ram Je Ram Je Je Ram Shri Ram Je Ram Je Je Ram
if we know anything about a path at all. If we know there might be a way to live in this world in a good way, with an open heart, without fear. It's only because of the great beings that have gone before us on this path. Out of their love, out of their kindness, they left some footprints for us to follow. So, in the same way that they wish for us, in the same way that they wish for us, we wish that all beings everywhere, all of us are safe, all of us are happy, all of us have good health and enough food to eat. And may we all live in peace and at ease of heart, at ease of heart with whatever comes to us in life. Namaste, take good care.